rent the county county farm. And this would not be they a critical part. They used to the actually be the signers for the, the CRP thing right at one point. No. No, I and just, and um, I just, I think we, we I, I, the current I think agreement we includes really the dollar amount that the was when they had the contract. Narrative, when in fact, but all, all the contracts are just we're pretty sure right. we, ten years, so we don't even have and all those payments no, I don't think we do even, right. I, I it just seems illogical to now. include the really the old language yeah. you're wanting yeah. higher wages now uh, uh, to me it does it, 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 it complicates it a lot I mean I don't know if the board just have wants to fill in more hours again because you don't do a certain percentage to wage to pheasants of all you know everything that you receive CRP I'm coming in with dollars Sure. And I want to do it in front of all. Yeah. And you know, we probably better do our thing. Yep, yep. I say we sell it. Call it order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody. Y'all had a great weekend. Hope you didn't leave all your burnt rubber and things. <laughs> okay. Everybody had a chance to review today's agenda. And uh, if you have, is there anybody has a conflict of interest with anything that we're going over? I don't think I see anything that should be objective. So Madam Auditor, would you please advise us with reading minutes? Uh, February 28, 2023, the Board of Supervisors met at 9 a.m. with Ty Rosberg, Chairman, presiding members present for Schultz, Dozark, Rosberg, Mulbauer, and Hyden. Minutes of the previous meeting were read and approved. On motion, the Board recognized claims uh, for Public Health Department and approved claims for all other departments. A uh, motion was made by Hyden, seconded by Mulbauer, to approve the award HMA resurfacing project County Road M55 from O Avenue to I Avenue to Inroads LLC in the amount of $2,498,344.32. Uh, engineer's estimate was $2,168,825.50. Motion passed unanimously. Motion was made by Hyde and seconded by Dozar to approve the appointment Linda Mulbauer to Region 12 COG Policy Council for a one-year term ending December 31, 2023. Voting aye, Schultz, Dozark, Rosberg, and Hyden abstaining due to conflict of interest. Mulbauer, motion passed. It says unanimously. I'm not sure if unanimously is the proper language. I think it should just yeah. say motion passed. I agree. Because you abstain. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll get that okay. unanimously off of there. Thank you. Motion was made by Hyde and seconded by Dozark to approve the hiring of Jason Blunk as a weed commissioner at the pay rate of $14.45 an hour. Motion passed unanimously. A discussion was made by the board about tax credit for volunteer emergency services provider. No action was taken at this time. A discussion was made with the board uh, with Brittany Ruba, FEH Design, uh, via Zoom about the city center remodel design. No action was taken at this time. A motion was made by Mulbauer, seconded by Hyden, to authorize the county attorney's office to consult with an outside council on a county ordinance soil restoration. Discussion with the board for initial exchange of proposals between Crawford County Sheriff and Teamsters. Local 554, during citizen input, there were citizens here to express their concerns about the economic impact, possible ordinances and safety. Dolby DeWitt and Brittany Rockwell from Senator Ertz's office stopped in to introduce themselves on motion, duly second of the board adjourned 11.59 a.m. Agendas for the next meeting are posted and available at the courthouse on Friday, 4.30 p.m. proceeding the next meeting. Just that one. Just that one thing. We'll get that unanimously off of there. Good catch. Yep. You want me to sign that? Yeah, one sign that because we'll just we'll wipe it off Wait of that minute. copy and she'll get it off of the copy that goes to the paper. I think I think is it matter about like Colby's? I think he spells it with a K. All right, so yeah, I don't know. let me look. Okay. 
10 years from now. So maybe Does that make, do we need to get that change on there correctly? I think it's a, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a big deal, but it's okay. not my minutes. So. <laughs> well, I, just, I think you'll survive probably. Okay. Instead of work. Here's the current management contract. If you want to see that. Sometimes it helps to. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, let's move on to our supervisor's reports. I see some notes to my left. Um, I would like to have Craig's notes on Vegas more, but let's go ahead and start with you. Those would be pictures on my phone, and you cannot see them. <laughs> okay. Come on, stop it. Okay, we've had a uh, uh, wellness center meeting on uh, Wednesday night, and. Uh, we had a representative from the YMCA there still yet coming to kind of see what's going on with the wellness center. They have now got uh, it reconfigured. Uh, the total square foot will be 67,900 feet, which is substantially smaller than originally planned. Uh, the estimated budget on that's 18,600,000. And if you remember correctly, it was 23, 26 million before. So they've done a lot of revamping. They've taken the senior center senior citizen center part of it out. They've taken the commercial kitchen part of it out. Uh, they've revamped the uh, soccer field a little bit. It's still going to be able to have the 9v9 and the two 7x7, seven 7v7 seven, seven seven areas. No bleachers or anything else. There'll still be room, and that's very crucial to making sure that we're, where they have room for uh, spectators, because yeah. when we're selling it as a possibility for um, uh, tourism, tourism. Yeah. and if there's no place to stand or sit, it's going to uh, take that, uh, uh, that uh, aspect away, yeah, sure. away a little bit. Um, they've kind of moved the uh, condensed restrooms and locker rooms. Uh, they've moved the child care portion of it to in by the lobby so that that person, the receptionist person, can keep an eye on that. The gentleman from the YMCA said that they have 150 kids in Atlantic come every day after school. And that's part of a revenue source to have after school programs. So that's something that uh, the big question is, you know, who's going to maintain it? Who's, you know, who's going to staff it? How is this all going to work? And uh, that it was kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg? We need to know the square footage, what's all going to happen. Uh, YMCA has to be able to make sure that, you know, we're going to get our fundraising and, and really how it's going to look. Uh, it is a fact that the city of Denison will own the building. Uh, DMU is going to help with utilities, and those are key uh, parts of it. Um, so it's down to 67,900 square feet. I do not remember what it originally was, but it's, it's down to that. Um, so uh, if you build it, how will we maintain it was kind of the question uh, that's really going around. Uh, you want to make sure that that's been addressed. Uh, Mike Cardin Don was the one that kind of brought that, that up in particular. Yes, so you sir. won't have a kitchen now, and like the there senior will but will you still have like a concession area? Concession, yes. Because you'll probably yep. you make some yep. money. That's going to be right in the lobby working. when you first walk in. Uh, they did not pass out drawings. That was all on a, uh, and so I can probably get that. That's fine. Uh, but uh, I'm just curious. Uh, that's going to be, uh, yeah. So they they've made some progress on it. The thing that I kind of have a little problem with is how we got it to be so large and we spent this money for the architect and now we've made it smaller and we have to spend more money for an architect and you know I I, I wish we would have just kept it to where it was and but we we're still moving forward yeah. uh our uh People that are uh, going out requesting money still feel very positive about the program. <clears throat> I did, I do have a uh, form that everybody can take and sign, uh, just kind of pledging if, if you want to donate, if you can donate either uh, or by your family. Uh, there's a lot of people going out uh, asking for that. I was going to print that out, but I'll maybe have it printed by the end of the meeting because printing is something I can't do very well. But it was a good meeting. You know, we're still really getting a lot of people that come. There's interest. Uh, Everybody that's on the committee still, you know, sometimes when you have a committee, certain people just drop off and they don't come anymore, but everybody's staying at the table. And um, okay. we all do agree that this is uh, something that we really need in our community. Uh, they're going out to the smaller communities asking for donations and, uh, you know, hitting Slesbury, Manila, Dow City, uh, and seeing how that's going to go. 
but I'm glad to see they've gotten it down. It still looks very appealing, very nice. Um, they've changed it from that brick and mortar, and it's going to be a uh, steel building, which is going to say there were some corners. Now, the uh, who was sitting next? Oh, the guy from Monogram, Eric. Uh, just felt like we should square it off a little bit more instead of having it kind of looks goes like this. Maybe yeah. it'd be better if we squared it off. And um, so yeah, uh, things are moving along on that. Steel going to be steel or wood? And steel. Steel structure. Steel structure. Yeah, that's the. So, okay. Okay. so we're senior citizens in our city works out there. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Right. Yep. And they've been uh, meeting with the senior citizens monthly to kind of. You know, make sure that that building, because there's some work that needs to be done to that building, but knowing that they're going to stay there now, that's going to become a project for them. And they're happy about that. Um, they were very concerned about the parking at the new center. You know, they just love where they're at. There's plenty of parking. It's they can get to it in there with their walkers and handicap. They don't have to worry about an elevator and um, they have the kitchen there. So maybe some improvements to that building might be the thing to do, but those are ongoing conversations that they have. Save their garage sale down there and all sorts of things. So um, other than that, uh, I've been working, you know, kind of trying to keep city center moving a little bit, kind of really trying to get a good grip on how that meeting is going to go tonight uh, so that we can have a, a good productive meeting. We'll all meet there at the public health at five, right? And then we'll head over. So don't be waiting at the city center because we're all going to be over there. Uh, yes. Mark, so Jean, could I just ask, ask you a question? As far as I think it was a concern of mine that I brought before also about the continuing running of uh -huh. the community center. And you said Mike Pardon brought that up. Mm -hmm. So is the YMCA, are they in a possible solution as to who's running yes. it or why is the, yes. what's the yes. YMCA's yes. 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 connection to they, this project? Yes, they would, they need to get a performer yeah. to kind of say what they will. The building will always be ours to worry about, you know, capital improvement, roof and uh, HVACs and things like that. So we would pay YMCA a fee they to would run that or it, how does that work? They would rent it from us is my understanding. So, so they would pay us. That's my understanding. That's my understanding. Uh, right from the city. Right. Uh, yeah. Not, not, yeah, the city. Uh, uh, said, the it's all under the city. <laughs> city, but nothing. Is there any agreements with the county and city that they want to get? Well, the, the, the word twenty eight e agreement has been brought up, but uh, never brought. It's just been mentioned, and that's never even asked me if we'd be interested. But they did say, well, maybe we could do a twenty eight e, and there's just like silence. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> For what? Or like we do with the um, imagination, station. imagination station that everybody would put some money in the kitty every year to keep the, uh, you know, because that when that roof goes bad, that's a big roof. When, you know, flooring goes bad, that's a lot of flooring. Mm -hmm. I think the can of worms that can be opened with that is, and then you all, we have Manel, Manel has a wellness center. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's right. what right. Right. I mean, we, we have to serve all the county. Yeah. Crickets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, the reason for having meetings is to throw out ideas and to have the conversations. And uh, it's a great question. Uh, who's going to maintain the building? Is your roof a south facing roof or east west? Oh, let's see when they changed it. Let me think about it. The It's, it's going to be facing the what the aquatic where the aquatic center is. So it's going to be facing east. No, 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 it's going to be facing south. So it'd be facing. I just was. Have you, has anybody checked into grant money for? Oh, absolutely. Solar, solar stuff oh, on solar. solar roof. No, no. But they've got. A, and our grant committee is on fire. They are uh, doing every grant. I, I just time. check into that since there's solar. a push right now. That could be through USDA. I don't know if that it just seems like it'd be kind of yeah, interesting. Be, uh, you know, they got be. shingles yeah. that are actually solar. Now, now, I don't know. That might create a big, a very high uh, maintenance rate. So, I mean, maybe you don't want it, but it's would be something to look know. into. Just a thought. Yeah. The, Sorry. Didn't yeah. So, I, I feel good. You know, we still go back and refer to our uh, uh, questionnaire that was asked and that penetration of, you know, what people want. We're really trying to keep it in line with what people said they wanted. So we, you know, it, the, where a lot of this $18 million expense comes from is that uh, level, that upstairs walking area. You know, if we had the walking area uh, on the first level around the uh, basketball court, that would save a lot of money. But most people are excited about having that be an elevated walking path that you can walk even if kids are down there playing basketball. Yeah. And the example. Not have an elevator though. 
well, that's there's your expense, you know. And so, uh, if you have ever been in Harlan's, their walking path walks around all of you know, and you do have to kind of. Even when I went there, we had to wait to cross through because people were walking. You know, mm -hmm. They're walking around, and then the kids are throwing basketballs. Then you have uh, different issues with that. So, uh, kind of a top priority for the majority of people that have uh, committed to uh, donating just really want the elevated walking path. And so that has stayed. So, so they've done a lot of good work. They're just uh, focused on getting, uh, fulfilling the needs of the citizens of the county and making sure that it's welcoming and open to everyone and kind of fit everything in. So it was a long meeting, but it was a good meeting. So is there a timetable in place? as So what they're hoping to attain? Ah, uh, I think here. Not at that particular meeting, I don't believe we discussed, but everything is just the sooner we can get it done. For some of the grants, there are. And so that um, right now they're requesting it. everybody on the committee gets their um, uh, forms in for what they're going to donate so that they can have 100% partici participation from the members on the board because that shows really well in the uh, grant application. Well, it's fair. It's to happen before 26, otherwise our $750,000 contribution. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We have to have that money spent by that time. So You're exactly right. Good Boy, and you know, if you listen to the news, there's back. people talking about pulling whatever is it used so far, pulling it back. Feds. Imagine that. Imagine that. Well, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll have a the little bit more of it. I don't know how much gravity they got to get some more money for the Ukraine. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, otherwise, um, you know, always, you know, pipeline conversations going on, um, uh, talking about ordinances, want to make sure that we are staying focused on, there's no deadline for ordinances, but by the hearing in October, you'll need to know all the parcels for the route, uh, otherwise it'll be harder to enact the ordinance for them, and that came from Miguel at the, um, uh, I can't think what her, it's a dot org, iowa.gov. So I'll pass this around just so you can see what the answers to, the, to some of those questions were. But um, I did contact Colin's office and uh, ask that when he has the conversations with Tim or whatever attorney he chooses, that because I would be questions that I'd like to ask. Uh, but then going to ISAC on Wednesday, We'll have some great conversations with other counties, and uh, Jim Cashman will be there. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm okay with waiting until after. I have kind of access to your address oh. um, uh, But that'll give us a chance to visit with other counties that are going through the same thing and really get to hear the meat and potatoes on this whole thing. So I'm looking forward to two, two days in the morning, kind of getting in the trenches with what's really going on with eminent domain and things like that, or uh, this. You know, legislature that came out and got out of Steve Holt's department, but then Jason's department didn't sign it, so have a little bit of standstill there. But the timing factor is going to be all it, and if we're going to do an ordinance or if we're going to do anything, we probably should be really working on it. So that's all I'm going to say about that. So my turn's up. Okay, are you done, Gene? Hi. Sorry, I was reading your notes. Or... That's all right. Uh, Mr. Mulbauer? Sure. Um, actually, I actually have a couple off what you said with eminent domain. A lot, of, I had a ISAC legislative update last week, and eminent, eminent domain, of course, is brought up again. House file 565 passed, that's the 90% sign up. Local zoning ordinance supervisors have a right to file for soil damage with IUB. Uh, it, it, a little more in depth, um, ISAC is registered in favor of that. Yeah. The one that didn't pass that you brought up was the Senate side, which was a two thirds voluntary sign up. Um, <laughs> that would be Jason Schultz's side. Uh, Jason voted against that. That bill failed. He said that there are people there on both sides, pro and con, or mm -hmm. that they just didn't want some things in there. So. We are. Uh, Carl Vanderwerd, the District 3 president for ISACs, uh, reached out to me and a, a few others. He set up a meeting with Governor Reynolds to discuss eminent domain and the implications of how it would affect us. And 
just kind of have boots on the ground of locals presenting to her of where we were at with things. Um, I'd ask Dean if she would go along with me. I think it's Thursday afternoon. Okay. Um, but I'll get the them time because we're going out to ISAC together. So that'll be a good meeting, at least to go right to the source and say, here's our concerns. Here's our concerns. And uh, be more excited about that. Yeah, I think that'll be a good meeting. So we'll see. I heard that one of these bills the governor wasn't in favor of. Yeah. Is it Steve's bill or the one that Steve's didn't make bill the sense? It's going to be vetoed, is kind of what came And that's, we'll get it, we'll get to ask those questions, yeah. which okay. I'm looking yeah. really. All right. I'm looking forward to yeah. that. Why? What didn't she like about it? Right. Or, yeah. you know, um, yeah. Okay. And I, I think it's a good good way too for us. Uh, rural counties yeah. to really voice our our opinion and our our thoughts on on this whole and our deal. County is directly affected, going to be affected you know, by it. So um, a lot of our other updates are going to sound repetitive because I've been reporting on them yeah. for the last couple of weeks. Um, comp board bills, House File three fourteen passed. That's the one where supervisors can dissolve the comp board altogether. Oh. But there's language that supervisors would have to follow back to blue. ISAC is registered <laughs> against that because I brought up there's no defining language to what actually is back to blue. And what does it stop? Right. Yeah. If, so if we, ever. We already did uh, follow so, back. So I mean it's kind of we're gonna let the let the supervisor get rid of the comp board, but you have to follow this law. That's great. So it leaves a lot of balls in the air juggling. Um, the Senate version of the comp board bill was um, that's the one where two supervisors would sit on the comp board, appoint two other ones. We'd have to show your work. It also has you'd have to back the blue. Not really sure still, then nobody could answer that. Not even the ISAC, Jamie or Lucas of what exactly that means. Um, but that is the one where when you show your work, whatever comes out of it is so solid. Shouldn't they that define, is binding. Don't you think they should define that in this bill? Well, I, I brought that up. And it's binding and, to the board of supervisors? Yes. Yeah. So whatever, because they're saying, well, you have two board members on the board and you appoint two others, whatever comes out of comp. So how, how, how big a board, Dave, would that oh, be? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not just a four-person yeah, board. No, it'd just... be um, two supervisors, two appointed members, and then um, well, then probably three others. So that'd be a seven oh, So person. all the elected officials don't get to have a representative on the I'm, comp board I'm anymore? not sure on that. When... The, what I read of it, it didn't sound like no. it. No. So that's... Really? That so which hurt. one? There's one of them that you all like that. Get, can lower at different rates. Yep. Right. right. Is that the one that passed or not? Yeah. Do you know? Oh, okay. Because both of them would be what comes out of it, I think, is set. But I think what's it's different is about that meeting's over with. It's done. It's done. But other counties don't automatically do the exact same oh, so thing. So there's where kind of some of that difference all. comes from, too. That's you know, I think years ago, you guys used to uh, could do auditor could get 10%, the treasurer yeah, could get 5%. Yeah, yeah. And then well, would, the comp board can recommend that. They can't, yeah. yeah. yeah but I, I think the sticking point is, is still back to back blue or something. Yeah. We but, don't know. It's not spelled out. They're defined at all. What, you know, those parameters are. I mean, it gives you guidelines, but you can and where does it stop? And you know, we're still trying to work within the budget that we have, and, and that budget What's isn't necessarily that? a Polk or a Lynn County. It, it just a lot, a lot of things yeah. up in the air on that. But you can take your pick of any rep or any senator quick. down there. So None of them can tell you. They they use Polk County what? as well. The treasurer in, in Polk County gets one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, so we recommend, up. and that's their work. We don't agree with the work. You're stuck because you have two two supervisors on the board. They were granted this is just the Senate files version, and you have the House file, okay. and you know they have to. They both passed out, but they have to still come to agreement on what the actual ending bill will be. But it's it still once again, to me, it feels like it takes a little bit of control out of our hands, even though we have two supervisors on the comp board. If that bill passed, it's the work is where the um, the work is where they're trying to say okay, that's, you, that's the, uh, deciding all factor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, EMA levy, House File 126, that passed out. Um, that's for the EMA Commission, um, now certified its own levy. Uh, there's been a lot of, there's a lot of pushback on that one. That's moved to Ways and Means Committee. Uh, they said, Lucas said that there wasn't a lot of appetite to pass that out of Ways and Means, so that could end there. That could not make that final. Um, supervisor districts, this doesn't really affect us, but that's, um, 
all counties over 60,000 population would have to redistrict and change from a plan two to counties move to a plan three district. Mm -hmm. And I think plan two would be out altogether. You have to be a plan one or plan three. Oh, they're saying plan two is out. Yeah. So you all are plan one. You are not voted in Everybody's by district. Yeah. Right. And so, you don't have to live in a certain district. Right. So plan three is a complete opposite of that. And that's what they're pushing all those bigger counties to be by district and certain, uh, you know, you have to live in those districts. They're not, I think. Mm -hmm. ha, let's see, uh, the House file 281 hasn't been passed out yet, but the Senate file of that version has. The rumblings a little bit on this one is okay, it's targeted towards the bigger counties are in Iowa. And not there's, there's a lot of them. I think there's eight or 10, maybe. Right. But they're saying that the counties already vote on who's in it. But it's another way of the state telling those counties, well, you have to district or have to change this plan, follow these rules. I know the auditors are in line to give the voters the, the right to say how they want their county exactly to be voted on. We don't need the state telling us how right. our county again, should vote. Again, yeah. And then another, <laughs> I guess, the worrying factor, a lot of the rural counties. So well, where's this? Okay, if they do this towards the bigger urban areas, what are they going to come into ours next and change? Right. And tell us how we have to vote. Right. Um, so we're pushing back on that a little bit. Um, let's see here. The... HHS ominous bill, the Senate file 471 passed out of rule, um, rules to that changes where elected Sorry, officials will only have 49% of control on our mental health boards. Not great because we're the elected officials. It's our skin in the game. You're gonna, you're gonna be trumped by a majority that are non elected officials deciding how mental health should be. Who puts those people on that board? Well, that's all. Right now, it would be where well, we appoint the, the supervisors, and then um, Gene is more your wheelhouse, but the other board members that are not elected. Uh, you know, we have the CEO of Plains Area as a voting member, and uh, just some of the different providers, their CEOs, and you know, I think so the main currently the makeup is what elected officials and it would be a supervisor from each county. And then there's uh, some of the provide. I think there's three. So there's a higher percentage of elected officials Absolutely. right yes. now. Right now, right now it is. But they would okay. switch that so we'd right. have only four, up It'd to forty nine percent. Yep. That's not good for supervisor elected officials to lose that control. That's right. Because, uh, like I said, you have non because elected like officials board, making bigger decisions for yeah. our regions. Supervisors. It's unusual for everybody to agree because every county has a different situation, and so it's not always a unanimous. Uh, and then, you know, you have, you have Kim from Plains area who's a voting member. Uh, I can find that for you. Well, well, don't, don't I remember Cecil having a, wasn't there a big struggle about how to make sure the supervisors stayed in control of that before? When, when well, I was that, there was talk that we had the super CEO were funding it. When we were funding right, it. Yeah. Right, right. Then when it went to the state, there were questions why we even need to be there because we're not, not making the decisions that we used to make and it's, it's mandated to us, you know. I got to keep uh, you close because you're going to get it back. Well, and, that, and, that, and they, they did not want to lose the local uh, input on it. So they said, no, 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 nothing's going to change. It's just all going to stay the same. But even right now, we did not have a full board meeting in uh, February because there just wasn't enough on that agenda that needed to be discussed. So, you know, there, it's already, I'm seeing a little bit, you know, we had, two, we had two in January because we really need to get the budget kind of done. But once we get that budget, and the budget's mandated. I mean, right. You have to provide those core services. Yep. Um, part of that core service goes back to the funding. You know, we're hoping for a ten percent carry forward. It, I think like maybe more like five. What is said? There's sixty three million dollars across the state regions that are sitting in their coffers. The argument from our side is we need those funds to start up programs. Yeah, that's expensive. We need those funds to pay for. You know, to money. keep our payroll going. Right. Um, but they want to lower that because they're looking at well, $63 million across the state. Not apples to apples for me to. If it was, if they were across the state, that's not a lot of money, though. Checks, right. Uh, it would be better, but we've got to do payroll and the money's sitting there and they haven't quite given it to us and we have to do payroll. Uh, so the state wants happen. that number brought down. They don't like having 63. There's some of them in the state, I should say. Um, um, the good things is that, you know, the idea of, of the HHS ominous bill here is that. You would have more beds available, which would free up space for our jails and things like that. And there's things that try to target helping mental health, but 
there's a lot of a lot of local control that we would lose. So, you know it's in my wheelhouse, and I'll be still. Three hundred thirty-six thousand dollars a county is all that. Is. Not much. Not, Not much. much. And you consider polks in that? They're. And then uh, one of the last things that was covered was the government reorganization bill, that 1600 page bill that was coming out that Reynolds put forward to condense governments. Oh, condense <laughs> government. that, was, that was passed, wasn't it? Or well, there were, came, I'm sorry, I think came, it came out, came out, out of funnel. Came, yeah, right. Came out of the funnel. Um, right. There's some things that would change, like community based corrections boards would move to an advisory board only. I, what I took that as, and I have to do some more digging into this, Kyle, <clears throat> that Cherokee and even West Central, Central Iowa, that you would no longer be a board member on that. You would be in an advisory role. And that the state would take that over and condense it with. Condensing how? How the hell they, uh, it's, they don't pay for anything. Right. You're squeezing HHS, it over here and it just and bulging out over there. It'd actually be HHS. The state would have HHS take else. those boards over. Um, and I have to oh, do some more digging into this one, though. When they changed it from DHS to HHS. It gave yeah. them a broader scope of uh, what they can kind of hold into. But it was, it was said in our meeting that some in the state think that the state HHS could more efficiently govern yeah. those boards. Good luck. So, I know that that's a concern, certainly. I mean, I'm on that third ju judicial district of the Department of Corrections, mm -hmm. and they yeah. had a meeting on Friday, and I told them I wouldn't be able to attend, and I'm hoping to, I told I think it's Maureen Hansen is the lady that's um, maybe the director for the for the district, and I told her that I'd like to come up to Sioux City and meet with her individually, so we're going to try to get together either this week or next week for me to get up there and meet with her, because I know that's a concern. That's been there. They've been a that's been the talk of every email that I've had has been about that re reorganization and us becoming an advisory board, uh, not an overseeing board. I think she would, I mean, I think she's concerned because she wouldn't have a job, I don't believe anymore. Um, it would be taken over by the HHS. Been a concern all along what that's really going to mean to the people that have jobs if it becomes because they do not want to become state employees, even if they, you know, so it's right. just, it's in its role and just almost exactly the way we worried that it was going to go. And we were assured in the very beginning, because we talked about it for a year before the state actually took over, what that was really going to look like, who's going to lose jobs, how much control locally would we lose, and it's coming to fruition. Right, all right. So, so I missed them all. Yeah. Nature about it. Feels like a little bit more of our authority locally is being chipped away at. Well, we need to find some other stuff for them to do down there. <laughs> and then uh, uh, I guess the other things I had, Ty brought up to me, I'm going to bring this up to the board of directors meeting on Wednesday about having maybe a solar session of understanding how solar could impact um, our counties, no different than wind turbines and just maybe floating some ideas of what we should do to be proactive on preserving our county and our road and infrastructures and giving the landowners rights while at the same time not hindering economic development. Just make us smarter. Yeah, I mean, right. Just, just to be it, more better, to be aware. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Um, just like wind turbines or pipeline, just mm -hmm. I think there's nothing on the rise. And Instead of learning on the go, we can be a little ahead of the curve here. That's kind of my yeah. theory. So I'll bring that up. And then, um, of course, I'll Ty, I'll let you cover um, Union negotiation. We we did have a meeting. I have one more quick question. So I was looking for my notes on it. Uh, were you are you referring to a governor's commission for mental health? Is that what they called it? Because I, I had some notes from a meeting that we had a while back. Uh, how they were were going to change well, it. This was just said. Government reorganization plan, sixteen hundred page bill. Okay. Community based corrections move to only advisory board. HHS take over those boards. That's all. I so I, I wonder they, if that's they, what they that's talking about. Could be part of that. Ask the governor's commission now. for more. Well, that's one of my better committees. We got past that before I know what's in it. Right. Involved. Right. Okay. So um, thank you. I'm, that's all I got. Okay. Thank you. Kyle, sir. 
I'm doing just conservation board one this Wednesday night, not last Wednesday night. So I put a out. Are here. you going down to ISAC? Uh, I will go Thursday if we don't have a disaster cabin. So oh, okay. <laughs> the kids at college and that is you're on your own. So, uh, <laughs> You and Chris, your cabin alone? Apparently. <laughs> awesome. So I plan on driving down Thursday and coming back Thursday to be here all for that. Uh, and I'm just working on this land management agreement uh, to solidify our stake in the council of the CRP. Funds. Uh, we need to get that. But uh, Martha's reviewed it. She's got some blanks that need filled in. And uh, I was talking to Terry this morning and she's already been in contact with Eric out in the FSA office trying to get the numbers that we need. And then we just needed to, really we need to decide if we want to keep it still split of our share, like 50% with Pheasants Forever, or do we want to change that? Um, I don't know, they seem to be doing our pretty good job of managing it if we, if we push them, you know. They did clean all the trees up and such out at the county farm. So I'm not against leaving it the same. It's just we need to, as a board, need to decide that. We want to do that. But I know we did make an arrangement with the Pheasants Forever to pay for the majority of that trees. We did, $16,000. Because they were out of the money. But then I see it on Facebook where they just gave a bunch of money to the student <laughs> sports fund. I see that. Which is a... Good. It's a good deal. It's just like, well, if we were, you're out of money when we needed to pay for trees. <laughs> we got money for that. So I'm not, it's neither here nor there, but we'll just hold the money until we get our share back on it. So, and they were fine with Pheasants Forever was fine with that. So, so we pay Pheasants Forever to manage it. Is that how that works? Right. Or, yeah. They have planted um, nesting areas and, right? Yeah. And yeah. when it comes time to re enroll all this, you know, Eric, you know, there's this, you got to clean all these trees up. I called KR. KR says, I'll take care of it. Uh, so, so they, Pheasants Forever took care of that and they did, did not submit us a bill for what it cost or? No, there was a company that took the trees yeah. down. Yeah, okay. they hired. It cost $16,000. And we paid that. We paid that. Okay. Yeah. They managed. They made the phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Can't we do that? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, they, and they've done. I think over the years, I can't think back, but they've done other things. They manage the the burning and such of it to stay in compliance with the CRP contract. Mm -hmm. But just like everything else, you kind of forget about things once in a while. Yeah. The trees didn't come quite over. Can you remind me again how many acres our county farm is? Does anybody know that? Well, there's 128 rentable acres, tillable ground. And I think there's 20, According to this, maybe 27.5 in CRP, so uh, 155, correct? Yes. Short 160. And I'm not sure. More or less, I think that's a yeah. final this is the right time to bring it up, but people have asked me, you know, over the years, why do we own a farm? And wondering why we don't sell that, why we're, you know, have a farm. And I really don't know the answer. Well, well, I know how we ended up with it, but there I don't was, know. Uh, you know, every county had a farm. Yep, yep, I remember. It was for, kind of for the indigent. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah. And uh, through that, some counties sold theirs. A lot of them did not. A lot of them didn't, okay. Yeah, Dallas County, I know this because that's where my boy DMAC has their ag stuff at that farm. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh, county farm. Uh, we always kept it as a bargaining tool if we needed why we... Our landfill was being filled up, but okay. if we needed to trade that for another chunk of ground someday. Enough. But we are at a point now that maybe the question is why keep it or yeah, why not sell it? But how, how do we have get that conversation going? You know, would it sounds to me like you're starting it? Well, <laughs> uh, some people wonder, you know, because we use 
the what we rent our uh, county farm for. That's kind of what the other uh, people that rent farm they look at wait mm -hmm. to see what we're going to rent ours for, and then that's the number that is used by different landowners around. <laughs> Some yeah. of the is only three dollars and five cents an acre. They didn't use that de well, a decimal point typo <laughs> in the newspaper. Lots of lots. Dan, I love getting you there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I totally understand that, but there's also the thought that I expressed maybe we need to redo how we uh, rent it. Do we do a beginning farmer or the thing that has been bouncing in the back of my head here is, uh, I forget what they're calling it, but where all the schools are, uh, what the heck is the word of it, Denison, Charlotte, Maple Valley, they're all starting to work together to bring like college type classes. I, maybe um, like an egg class there. I'm yeah. trying to think why not maybe maybe a portion we could do that somewhere or or even just rent it to the local FFAs or something. I don't, I don't we know. Put it on the agenda so we can have an open discussion and uh Ideas. And farmers possibly come in and give their opinion about the county owning a farm that we rent out for. So we want to sell it. We better get selling it. Well, I, yeah, I was going to say, we should have sold it a year ago. Sorry. Right? Sorry, it, down a bit, Sorry so. it, just, it just seemed like a time, because it just was brought up to me not that long ago. With interest going up. Are they going to sell it mm -hmm. and not have anything to do it? Just to dump those funds back into our fund balance seems a little bit uh, off what we should do with it. I think, I think we should have a project it. for it. So okay. That, if we did ever go down that road that hey, this is what we're going to use it for that's sure. going to benefit our county for years to come uh, not just a one and done that we no, sold it know, maybe, maybe, like said, maybe we just revise we don't rent it to the highest bidder here I'm a, all right or, or we go around that we way go but, some, we find a different route that's i don't mind that education part. maybe that's just, that's that's just an education uh, or something you know I, you know, I think maybe it'd be a good idea to put it on the agenda and have an open discussion about it. So but that, I, I know there's a number of counties that have gotten have sold their county farm, like Carroll County did, but they also, I think, put a lot of that money towards their new jail. Yeah. Um, um, so there's things well, that those the counties have things. done to, you know, improve their county and not. We have the, some uh, things we could do makes to sense improve they, our that county. Makes perfect sense. So. Well, it would be just a short. Four yeah. and a half million probably would get out of it. How much? One point something, one point three, four, five, somewhere with just an estimate of what it would bring. I don't think it'll bring top dollar, just to, but it'd bring good money. Well, we can start brainstorming. And, and I wonder it. if it wouldn't be more appropriate to, if it'd be under the guidelines, to go into closed session to discuss what those avenues could be. I think we can have an open discussion in regards or maybe to, until you get that but point, once we start decision, we start talking to go down then a have different road then we have close. to try and go into closed session well i think it's something i know, think to have it out there where it would be open discussion where folks could give their ideas too would probably be important well i think it's, it's another one of those part, things that fall into the category the answer is why do we do it because that's why we've always done it and i think it's a good time to reevaluate have we always been doing it you know things have changed a little bit since we started doing it that way so. could you look on the deed how long the count is on that farm yep see well, when we purchased at it one point in time we, we sold off the actual house right you know, right. So, county would, that go would the county have to pay capital gains? I have no idea. Because we owned not. it. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a good question, though. Whenever it's a great question. That's a great question. Or are we? I don't know if we're under that uh, vision or not. No idea. Uh, or if you could have to do like a ten ninety one. See, everything we bring up brings up more questions. We've made money off it, so that's a good question. Yeah. Right. Usually those 1031 exchanges you have to be like for like. Right. Meaning if you sold farm ground, you have to buy farm ground. Yep. You can't sell farm ground and buy an apartment complex or you know get that 1031 exchange. Right. So that, that's the interesting question. Right. Um, Good morning. We need to ask Colin or Martha to yeah, we put that on the agenda, but I think it's a good conversation. Right. Let's have maybe it. Maybe I agree. Maybe I'm Mr. Parr done. Uh, I mean, because we, because I, I think Dave makes a good point. Because if we've owned it, the we county's got a lot of good out of that for a good number of years. So if we sell it, we should, in turn, take that money and do something good for the county over a good number of years. If right? we have a break, I'll go to uh, the recorder and see if she can look that up and see if she can find how bad. Probably only sense. 
Yeah. I think it's. Uh, I think we're going to be amazed how long we've had it. So. Mm -hmm. I, I think we'll be amazed right at the most. It's going good. Have somebody you know, with any money. Have and... Conversations right. that we keep right to the minute you walk in. So we'll see that on the agenda next week, probably. So we need to get our research and our conversations done by next week. Correct. Okay. What's that? Yeah. Did you have anything else, Mr. Schultz? I didn't know. Okay. Craig, you'll have to come back to you. Input. I don't have anything. Okay. Okay. Calls okay. Me so if I got to take stuff in my I'm doing that. Ben? Yes. Usually when you show up, well, you're kind of short, so we might be able to get back to our <laughs> stuff after you. <laughs> what do you got? Go ahead, neighbor. What do you got? Uh, just a full game. A few things uh, to approve. Uh, I'll uh, make a gravel purchase uh, from. Uh, Stratford gravel for uh, both from Kate's pit as well as uh, the for pit over by over in Carroll County. There, uh, I can't remember the name of Swilly Stratford Sparks Sparks. Sparks. There, there you go. Sparks pit. Seven fifty a ton there. Yes. And eight eight hundred three a ton at the at, at Kate's pit. Yep. Yep. Fifty thousand from Kate's and I believe twenty five thousand from uh, Sparks. There is kind of what we was what you're looking at. And uh, Mr. Chairman. I'll make the motion to approve those two purchases at that price. All righty, Mr. Mulbauer makes a motion. I'll second. Ms. Hayden makes a second. No, no, this is for the 24 delivery period. So yeah. We're, uh, yes. Yeah. So is there any further discussion on this? Hearing none. And entertain, well, I already got the motion. So all in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Opposed no. Chair votes aye. How many? Motion to approve the next ben, one. How many? I mean, this is just a portion. This ain't the Alice tips at all yet. No. This is all no. through Stratford. It's just Stratford. Right. Yeah. I'm just, you know, you see all the the, the road situations the way you they want are. The right chair now, to sign here? Or is Paul the sign county here? Is only don't uh, move uh, on, you know. See. What, what do we use in that chair? It hands every year. I mean, there's. There's 75,000 ton just from Stratford. So, what are we getting from Hallis? That much sure. again? We usually spend about one and a half, two million on gravel. So, it's divided I by $8, well, plus trucking. Bottom mm -hmm. end, that'd be Paul, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trucking. Okay. And then our white rod. Want the so board to sign the back of it, then? They sure can. This is <laughs> none of the white. This is just. This is just a strip. Yeah, I do like hallets. that. Yeah. Get, I'm not sure what you got about another half as much again, probably out of Hallett's for sure. Yeah. Not more. I imagine. I guess yeah, that, I, usually I think he got more out of Hallett's last year than he did. Stratford. Like, what yeah. I like about Stratford yeah, though is the 15% added blend of white rock with it. That really seems to help with it. Yeah. I think so. But I mean, really, what they're they're not exactly doing the sieving process like uh, like Hallett's right. are doing. But they're they end up mixing it with the Mixing it with the, the limestone and trying to get close to our gradations. And uh, the gradations we were watching that a little bit. Uh, the Hallett's material is already made. And, uh, when they uh, well, they sent us their gradations. I, I think it was kind of, well, we didn't really get a chance to do our own testing, but they sent us all their gradations yeah. on what, the, what they made. And, and, uh, do, we, do, we, do, we, do we typically periodically just pull a can out to check that gradation or not? Yeah, usually we try to send a guy up every day that they're making. Uh, we got somebody that takes notes anyway. What's that? Don't we have somebody that takes tickets anyway? Or don't we do that anymore? They send them uh, up there to grade it every day. Yeah, so we always have tickets coming out of there, whatever we take out, but um, uh, when they're making it, we usually try and do our own you know, quality control testing. Uh, you know, these, Maybe get one gradation a day from when they're when they're making it, but uh, I, I'm not sure uh, what happened. They, the material's already made. They sent us their list of gradations. They do their own gradations as well, but we like to verify it and do our own quality control. I don't know a lot of counties do that, but uh, I like. But that. we uh, we always kind of try to keep them on their toes in that respect. Hey, we're watching. <laughs> and, uh, so I do appreciate that Stratford so you know. Um, Here's your pile. They'll, they'll get it yeah. dug out and we might have a bot. It's yes. just there for us to use as we need it. Yep. And hell, it is not that way. Get it out of here. Yeah, it's, they make it, we take it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I don't hold care about it in that respect, but uh, 
Am I supposed to sign the front of these, or is that Paul? I didn't hear the answer. I heard her ask it. I believe she stamped the back of them. Yeah, I did. Yeah, she did do that, but I didn't know if you needed me to sign her here. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure. Paul signs it, or if you folks do. I assume Paul, I guess. Yeah. He needs it different. I'm. I'm a phone call away. All right. First ten Okay, what do you got next? Just application. Uh, Hemron and uh, Jericho we got both set their uh, charts and uh, both will be applying dust control again this year. Did you have a lot of people pick up Hemron? I don't know what the percentage is, but quite a few. Yeah, uh, is that the dust that? Control of people put in front of their right. places right. out of the country. And we right. apply that then? Is that how that works? They, they, apply, or it. they apply it. Yep, they, uh, so if a citizen wants that, they just contact the county to put it on, or they contact these people directly? We uh, They contact them directly. We give them their, their information. We'll get a list from from these guys of everybody who's going to have it done, and we'll shape up the road ahead of them nice. before they apply it. We give them a time frame when we want it applied and uh, some specifics on uh, what they're going to, what we require them to put down. Say somebody new, just say myself, could still call the engineer's office and say, and you would give them contact information for Hefron or Jethro, right? Right, right. And it's on our website as well. So and that's right, direct most people. Okay. Okay. But we only, correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, we only improve certain vendors to do this Right. So that we don't have a hundred different people just going out on our roads and putting dust control down. That's right. We used to just have one. Now we have two. Yeah, we need a little bit of organization to it. You can't, you know, different people doing it at different times and trying to really, you know, get the roads shaped up for numerous people. We just say, here's the time frame you're going to do it. Here's what you're going to put down. I can't dump my waste so, on the road. Some people do. Only if you don't get caught. Yeah, we did it out of the last year, what, seven, eight miles? Yeah, that was pretty nasty. <laughs> so, uh, I make a motion to approve uh, 2023 dust control agreement with Jericho and Heffron Services Incorporated. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Schultz, second by Mr. Dozark. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Chair votes up. Motion carries. And on to the next one. Leave the top one there. It's on the back of the sheet. Mm -hmm. We have motion to approve contract bonds and certificate of insurance for the HMA project. Uh, or uh, F55. I've been looking through this. Design uh, is a, the, the performance bond. But, uh, and there's performance bond in order. It looks to be yes. Yes, the I don't know how much Paul discussion Paul's had with you on as far as the specifics on the project. You know the numbers and what what the project came to be, but. Mm -hmm. 2.5 by valve, 2.5 million uh, for the yeah. HMA. That's when we approved the last cut part. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. No, this is where we're going to approve the bond certificate. Contract of bond and certificate of insurance. So I'd entertain a motion for that. Make that motion. A second. And Mr. Mulbauer seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all, all in favor, state so with an aye. 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 Opposed, no. Chair votes on. Motion carries. Anything else wise going on in the world of secondary roads? I believe you got a tap. Are you ready for the snow? We're gearing up for it. Don't know what we're really proposing yeah. to get, but it uh, sounds like it's starting to get a little bit of a mix overnight here. Uh, might get a little bit of ice and whatnot. Getting very many calls on roads, losing the bottom. 
it starts slowing down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's still some, and uh, especially around the detour there, uh, where yeah. people are finding their way around uh, Charter Oak there and uh, get some calls. That's about. looking really good. Keep I that. keep on driving about every day to see how in case somebody would call, and it's like it's really improved in yeah. the week since they, the guys are doing a good job. I think. Which, which one's that? The 140th Street. Yeah, so. where people find a way to around the bridge uh, replacement up there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I was out yeah. yeah. after the meeting here. Go check it out myself. And it goes up it's there. But I think things are starting to finally dry up a little bit. Uh, just, just in time for the next round of moisture. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it'll go away too. <laughs> the uh, I'd, I'd actually went out and drove yeah. the old, the old going south on what is it, 120th? Is that the burn? 120th? 110. On that, and because I'd had a couple calls on that, and that one they'd been putting rock out there, but it was still pretty squishy. Where is that? One tenth going south of one forty one. Oh, okay, yeah. but it, that was last week. So yeah, last week it was the roads are still you know, bottoming up a little bit. We were getting quite a few calls last week. Especially, uh, well, what you did made a tremendous difference. I took S Avenue home and went some calls on S Avenue, and you just hitting those key spots where it was, you know, rutted up. Yep. Made a world of difference. Yep, yep. And we take every call. We we look at every every everything that folks call in about. You know, we and uh, trying to address everything. But uh, yeah, they they were just running ragged. You know, of mm -hmm. course the guys are trying to fix fix the cross boil areas and uh, we're and uh, but things are drying up. Things are, I think things are going up pretty good. Out there, actually, yeah, like I said, just in time for this next show, but. Uh, We'll get that off the roads and uh, hopefully everything will stay dried up. So. Yep. You know what? It'll be for, for long. It'll be in good shape. I'll be hollering about water. It will be on to the next thing. So. Yep. <laughs> well, that's all I have. Okay. Well, thanks, Ben. Certainly appreciate it. Good work out there. I know it's a challenge right now. Uh, Seems like the most, the, even when they're calling and kind of complaining, they just ask, is there something we can do to that? I mean, it isn't somebody saying so that much. you're doing a terrible job. I mean, they, they know we're dealing with a, a lot of problems are very understanding that it's just the time of year. They're just pointing out, hey, you got a bad area here. We can pull in to see if we can bring it on something. And then pass. I think we're going to start getting stuck. They really know. Yeah, we're going to start getting stuck. But, um, and like I said, that's what sent the foreman out or myself would go actually look at it, see if there's truly a problem before we just say, yeah, we'll come out and drill rock now. Yeah, yeah we want to, you know. There's a lot of worse areas out there than some that <laughs> are being called. So. Right. so I think we're doing a good job. Here we do. Yeah. But again, construction is carrying on up there. I think they I haven't been over it. I was gonna go that way this morning. I well, took a little longer chores than I anticipated to I'm gonna drive around that way and see the drains in here anyway. Yeah. What's that? I, I see the cranes in here. There must be okay. no bridge think, door out. Huh? I think they pretty well got the structure out. So. And uh, yeah, uh, Brent uh, mentioned he's going to go up and give them some stakes for their uh, abutments and, uh, and whatnot. So they're, I said they must have it pretty well out. So up there to that point. So yep. I was going to go up and check it out myself. So I haven't been able to up there today or yesterday yet. So. Compared to last year, we might have it done quick. Uh, they're after it. Yeah, they're Maybe gonna... we can have a ribbon cutting, as Paul said to me last week when I talked about ribbon cutting on the 4th of July when we all drink some beer and shoot some fireworks. On. <laughs> <laughs> and then he always it, said that. And then Hill Sullivan shoot his cattle back. Down <laughs> City on the Kenwood Highway, the city of Dallas City had a deal, and they actually had, had a little party on that. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. Well, cool. All right. Well, thank I you, Brian. Sit on my back and watch that one. Thank you. And we could do like when they open the Golden Gate Bridge, have band and everything out there. You know, the Ricketts All Star Band. <laughs> Print an elephant across it. <laughs> <laughs> See, it holds it. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. See you, Ben. Okay. 
on to we got 15 minutes to burn. There we go. Oh, it's at 10 a.m. It is 10 o'clock. We have two minutes to burn. Well, you're just trying to skip stuff. I know. Trying to expedite this meeting. Well, I'm trying to get it done early for a change. Old man glasses out. Old glasses. Old man. Borrow mine. Borrow jeans last week. He did borrow mine last week. Everybody could read that paper, so I really don't know it. On what Dave and I discussed with the uh, sheriff. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. We just didn't, didn't come to an agreement yet. Nope. When do you meet? Still again? working on it. On the with the sheriff's when union. Yeah. What's that? When do you meet again? Um. When they uh. The, they got they got to do a quote for that and an offer that we threw at them and right. they got right. nothing scheduled. The ball's kind of in their court. That's it. We got you. Okay, so here we are, ten o'clock. Let's look at this. Make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. There's been a motion made to open the public hearing by Mr. Schultz, second by Mr. Mulbauer. All in favor, state so by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The chair votes aye. Motion carries. Was there any written or phoned in objections or comments, I should say? No, I haven't received anything. Okay. Do we have any comments from the theater? I have no objections. No objections from our audience? This is merely does not solidify any budget. This is just solidifying the max levy max, rates yep. that we could right. propose vote on our citizens. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if we vote on that, we can't raise any higher than that. Okay. Well, and it's max dollars. It's max dollars. Right. Max dollars. More anyway. than eleven. Right. right. We're already reached that limit. Yeah, that's yeah. the maximum. Yeah. Any questions, Mr. Dozark? You're the newest one on that. No, I guess just what Terry said was that. Um, this locks in our dollars. And, max and, dollars. And they come up with that maximum dollar amount mm -hmm. by taking the current valuation times the maximum levy rate. Right. That you could charge. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And that is so for the two general, general basic, it's three dollars and fifty cents. Mm -hmm. And supplemental, supplemental does not have a cap. It's on need. And so and because it's on need, supplemental is very specific on what you can spend it on. It's benefits like IPERS, like right. uh, things like that. We we have elections under general supplemental um very specific things can be there and that levy currently is um a dollar 40 so 350 for the basic dollar 40 for the supplemental and then in rural the max for rural basic is 395 and the current supplemental is 10 cents Okay. Gets us to the 405. To the, to the 405. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Got it. Any other okay. questions? And this all started probably five years ago. Maybe, years maybe. maybe. Yeah. It, the state felt like um, it was another level of transparency to the taxpayers. And yeah. I think it was. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Another hoop to jump. Well, through. I'm guessing there were some issues in <clears throat> probably some counties where yeah, there was um, some flags. Is that is another step to yeah. developing a budget? Because I mean rural basic and general basic, they're all they're capped. They're capped statutorily. Yeah. You have to have very specific reasons why you would go over them. And now with the new legislation posed this year, you can't. Unless it's a disaster. Uh, yeah. It's Unless disaster. it's a disaster. Right. Right. It is a disaster. That is the old, it is a disaster. Does that count? Yeah. Good. So do we need to come out of public hearing? So, yep, no. Yeah. Is any other any other question? Uh, hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to come out of public hearing. So yeah. moved. Second. Moved. Moved. Motion made by Mr. Dozark, second by Ms. Hyden. All in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Chair votes up. The public hearing. I will. Uh, pretty, pretty close. Well. Not, not quite yet. Can't make that motion. You see. Not 21005 yet. We're close. 
We are close. Do we have the address for the county farm, the actual physical address of it? Why? Um, um, so I was going to go get the deed on it. It would be easier if I had that address. Um, if you go ask Mary, she'll bring it up for you. She won't need the address. Okay. I'll just, she said Mary would be able to look up the deed without the address. Yeah. I was just going to try to get the deed. Well, it's 10 05. 10 05. All right. I'd entertain a motion to uh, for a resolution. Make a motion to approve the resolution uh, in regards to the maximum property tax dollars. I'll second that. Motion's been made by Mr. Schultz, second by Ms. Hyden for a resolution on the max property tax dollars. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Mr. Dozar. Yes. Ms. Hayden. Yes. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mr. Moldar. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Resolution carries. Thank okay. you. I'm your line. Um, well, I'm not by my name. <laughs> Get a scribble of names. Hide your name. Just put in their name. Sign <laughs> your name, Mr. Dozar. <clears throat> Do we need the initial up here on this front page? No. no. We'll fill that in for you. Okay. It was it's for how you voted. Okay. Oh, okay. Got yeah. It. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Do we have to do anything with the initial? Oh. I think so. Okay. Amy, would you like to come forward so we can begin the discussion? Yeah. Vote before. Increasing our disability insurance benefit. Yes. So um Basically, right now, the income level cap is capped at 150000 and um, Paul is not quite, his income is not quite there, but when you add the IPERS in, he's just above that limit. So um, National In Insurance Services asked us if we want to raise that income level, so, because right now, he's being capped at 150 when he's <coughs> With IPERS, he's at like 151. So um, just didn't know if we wanted to increase that level or if we always just want to keep that at 150. I think when we started the policy, we didn't have anyone yeah. at 150. So we, you know, we just. What is Collins then? Because he's up there too. Yeah, he's not quite there. I mean, he's probably he'll probably less, be there. Less on work count since he's got a yeah. physically hazardous job. Or he's closer to 120, is he? Yeah. So will that? What would that cost us? What would the extra? I, I mean, it's it's not it, right now. It's 21.25. It'll go up 21.53. So okay. it'll go up like 28 cents. I mean, it's so it's not about the cost. It's just okay. the this. the level. So like, right now, if he were to get injured. They're only gonna give him a benefit of twelve thousand five hundred when it should be like twelve thousand six hundred and thirty three or something like that. So, because gotcha. your disability, you only get a percent of Correct. what your income is. And what this is saying is that you can cap it at one hundred and fifty, and even if they earn two hundred and fifty, that's the most that that disability right. insurance company will pay. Right, is that one hundred and fifty? And I think when we started the policy, we right, just, we had no one. We didn't have anyone at that amount, no. but now that we do. No. I'm just asking, do we What's want to increase it? I mean, I don't know if we want to increase it to 200, 250. I mean, I don't know. I don't think we'll have anybody at 250. Forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> Over time. Oh, I mean, it's just, yeah, it just, it just happens. But Yeah, but most of our people that are that high are salary. What would your recommendation be to raise it to? You don't know what the added cost would be. <laughs> To there, go to 200 or to go to 250. No, I mean, it the only there's no added cost, it's just you know what 
just need to know what you want the income level to be. Because, well, like I said, right you now, you got to figure with the IPERS and stuff like that. So, but we're just at one fifty one with Paul, right? Which is probably and that's with the IPERS because that's how the disability works. It's with the IPERS. Yeah. Exactly. And we, so we I mean, we can leave it as it is, but those those higher salaries just know that they're not going to have their full sixty percent. They'll be like at fifty. 59.7 or something. <laughs> is this something that is renewed every year? Um, every two years. Every two years. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they want to go. What 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 increments would they would a five thousand dollar like go to one fifty five or you have to go to one seventy five or two hundred? What is there any? We well, don't want to do this every year, right? Yeah. And I feel like every time you know, like now, That's a three percent increase on one hundred fifty thousand. Right. How long I mean, we're going to be coming back doing this all the time to the next level. Excellent. Yeah. But excellent well, we know what I'm saying. So she's saying that it doesn't really cost. It's not like it's per thousand you pay more. Well, or right. Three percent like of one fifty. So. 4,500, so in 10 years, you they get 195. Yeah. So, right, we take it to 175. Don't worry, this me year, this early in the day. Two years, <laughs> see where we're at. 175? <laughs> Is that your motion? I'll make a motion. We raise it to 175, so we don't have to do it every year. And if, you, if we do, I guess I'll just, did you second? I, I did I'll, not. Okay. Did you? Yep, okay. I, I, I will second. Okay. And then we'll go to questions, okay. and then I can ask a question. Okay. Okay. Discussion. Okay. Discussion. Discussion. But um, raising it to 175, I guess my question is, is that it doesn't, they don't take into account the number of employees the count the county has, just the number of employees. I guess what I'm asking is that we're only charged, okay, I'll back up again. The county pays 100% of the disability for every employee. Correct. So our cost would only go up for your the more that people make, our cost goes up. Right. So if we cap it at 150, once they would make more than 150, our cost would stay the same. Right. And now ours will go up only for those employees that are over that amount, up to 175. Right. Based on that motion. Unless we get a renewal rate that goes up. I mean, didn't you have a number that two dollars? What? What did you tell me? Twenty-one. So right now his amount is twenty-one twenty-five. And if it goes up to the level that he should be at, it would be twenty one fifty three. That's not a lot. I mean, right. I just, I was by in my thought process. I just didn't want the insurance company to say, okay, now that you're raising that amount to one hundred seventy five thousand, it could be that way for every employee. <laughs> See, and therefore, your overall have, rate yeah, is I'd going up. Right. But since we pay money. per employee and we pay a hundred percent of it. Yeah, I understand right. that we're only going to pay that little bit extra for mm -hmm. anybody that would exceed their yeah. current yeah. minimum or maximum of 150000 And our rate so. actually has gone down. Our long-term disability rate has gone down from when we first got this policy. Um, and so it's we pay 0 0.0017 on every $1,000. So... Um, we have never actually had an increase on that rate. So the only time the it, there's an increase is when there's a raise. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Outstanding. So we have a motion by Ms. Hayden and a second by Mr. Dozark. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Chair will tie. 175. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that to our attention. Yep. Keep us on top of things. All right. And 15. Tax abatement. So, yeah, this is kind of a little complicated. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, Familiarize yourself with Dow City, yep. Highway 30, the trailer court that's along the tracks there. Yep. This piece actually lies outside the city limits in the rural area, the, the, the triangle piece highlighted. Triangle. Okay. Oh. So he built a storage unit there and about five foot of the corner sets in the city limits. So, and then the other 95 foot sets outside. Awesome. So he originally went to the city of Dow City and got a building permit, a tax abatement, and a um, 
annexation um, re request. <laughs> so he did the right thing. So then he finds out that, um, well, maybe we should, um, because 95% of it's in the rural, we should, so he got a rural building permit and an urban revitalization or tax abatement and said that he intends, he's trying to get it annexed into Dow City and Dow City was wanting to annex it. So then they find out they're within two miles of area. So then, so then they have to have permission for annexation from the area in city hall or city government. So this has been about eight months in the working. So Nick's done, he's communicated every month or so with me. And so, um, so Arian has granted him that. So now the ball's back in Dow City's court. If this gets annexed, then our tax abatement would not be applicable because okay. it would be in there. But it, to be fair with him, we should probably approve the tax abatement on it. And um, because he did jump through the hoops the proper way yep. and see what happens. I, <clears throat> I can't imagine them not um, annexing it. But, you know, if it gets past, um, I think, is it July 1, that you and I can't do much about it then, Terry? We have to leave it assessed in the rural. Probably. Uh, yeah. So so just to plan ahead, and, you know, we probably should do it that way. I have I guess. a question. Is the tax abatement for the city of Dow City the same as what the tax abatement it's is? It's a county? little bit better because it's a five year okay. versus a three. Uh, guessing that's the initiative for it and exit. And it's not, you know, it's a, if I remember correctly, $110,000 storage building, so assessed value. So it's not like it's a, a million dollar property. And the problem being, you know, when the building sets on both in the city and outside the city, this isn't the only building in Crawford County that way, but there's a few out there. So my recommendation would be to, Grant it, and we'll just have to play it by year. If um, by the statutory dates, you know, if the city annexes it, then it goes to them. If not, we'll apply it and go from there. Okay. I'd make a motion that we approve the tax abatement for 402 by, through 512 East Fulton Street, Dallas City. Second. There's been a motion made by Ms. Hyden, seconded by Mr. Schultz. What's the amount on that? So the building, it, it has to be more than $100,000 to uh, qualify for the county abatement. And so I think the assessed value is like 110 or 115 or something like that on the building, the improvements. It's just over the threshold. Even with the 10% and the 5% that sits in Crawford County, do we still want to? Well, we have 95%. And that's, see, we have the majority. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right now. So we also got, off with that. Yeah, I'm just thinking this through. Yeah. Even so, so it just makes the hundred and five percent of it. Yeah. So, it, yeah. yeah, he makes it through. How much are we actually paying? Pardon? How much are we actually paying? I would have to look. I think the assessment was right at 110 or 112. Will it be a three year full abatement? Yeah, sorry, it would be the three year 100%. That, so that thanks for asking. Because they, do they have this choice of doing? You know, a certain there's percentage. a five year percentage or a three right. year, yeah. Yeah. pretty yeah. much everybody takes the three yeah. year, yeah. Over yeah. Yeah. which is better for us because the budget is good. Term. He's good. He's good. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. not yeah. easy. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Do you got it all scribbled down, ma'am? Yes, you okay. were accurate there. <laughs> Have you read my notebook? I, I, I would keep <laughs> There's only one person that needs to read. Megan. No? That's right. Okay. All in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Chair votes aye. Thanks for sharing. Sticking with me on that way down the bottom for the next. I knew it was signed. It was going to get complicated. I just knew yeah. it. Okay. Oh my. We better wait two minutes to get to our citizens. <laughs> 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 
on the ball today. You know, I had never I'm seen trying. that. First cool. time for everything. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I All right, it. citizens input. And, I, and I have talked to other Mr. Counties. Munch, do you have any <laughs> comments to make? Yeah, I'll make a copy of it. Uh, I guess just on some of the activities of the legislature, uh, like, Talked to Tony Smith, who's uh, one of the supervisors in here at Sarayana last week. And, and that whole board is kind of internal, uh, the, the same thing. And I asked him, and of course, they're all Republicans, and four of you are Republicans. And I asked him, how do you guys feel if this, you know, if the Democrats are controlling the legislature and we're telling you exactly what to do, you know, would, would, you, would you get mad a little bit sooner? <laughs> Because it seems like at some point there's going to be a lot of things to be mad about. I don't know. I could do it any sooner because as soon as I heard, I was peeved. So you better you better sell off the county farm pretty soon because once they find out you've got some asset, they're gonna they're gonna take they're it. gonna want it. Yeah. Oh boy! Or take it. You're right. Yeah. yeah I don't know what's going on. Just, just sitting there. You guys don't need it. Well, we're going to have it on a discussion next uh, week. So yeah, but I mean, that's just, a, I understand your rhetorical point there. I mean, it's just about action. after everything, our governance and, yeah, I'm. Uh, and, you know, as a board, do you really want to bring, I mean, the, the thing about the compensation board is it, it keeps fights away from this board. You yep. don't end up fighting with Terry. You don't end up fighting with. The other elected officials. That, uh, we don't fight. We don't fight. You don't now. <laughs> <laughs> but do you really want to bring that in? This, I mean, I don't know no, that anybody's no, really. No, no, no. That I, I don't want to feel like I have to fight for a salary either. It, it's, I mean, you know, it's exactly the opposite. Right. Um, it, it may be clumsy now, but at least you're not. It's very clumsy. Getting in each other's throats about <laughs> these things. Right. Sorry, Dan. I really thought the more popular move was to not get rid of the comp board altogether. Right. But was to retool or repurpose the comp board and, and try to make it better by having two board members on it with two appointees and go in that direction rather than yeah. just become more of a negotiation process similar to what you're doing with the, the well, yeah, a solid board. negotiation thing where you know we don't sit here and go, what the heck were they thinking? Right. I mean, how many times have we asked that? Both years and well, hopefully the numbers point. that come out of that compensation Depends board are more responsive. Right. Right. And that's where really, my question comes in. It's exactly when they say you have to have a worksheet. Yeah. Are they giving us and the worksheet to, to get the answers well, or are we comparing it to other counties? What's the guidelines for the worksheet? Because that worksheet could be extremely <laughs> creative. Lightly, but it'd be nice you know, what, what's the worksheet? You bring your you worksheet and you say, well, I say that the auditor DC, needs a 25% raise because the, the auditor in Polk County is making 100. Or, you know, I mean, I'm picking numbers, you know, you're not going to really add up. Yeah, and that's needs to be based on what I do, not what yeah. they do. Right, do right. Not what else. Else. So the flaw for me is that you're not really dealing with any issues Sorry. that I mean, very rarely does anything come up before this board where it really matters. Any of those things, there's not a lot of ideological things that happen here. Correct. I got a C behind my name when I'm sitting here, Crawford. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, that's it. You know what? It brings up the point about where when we were talking about juvenile detention. You know, we, Kyle and I look at it every time we go to those meetings where we're struggling to deal with these kids. And I just worry that there'll be less yeah. emphasis from a personal level. I mean, I, I just don't see the state having the same concerns that we, you know, I mean, we're worried about it every time we're there. I mean, whether we're worried about the kids themselves. I mean, we watch Nate over there working his butt off to try to find ways to help these kids as opposed to just throw them in a closet and forget about them. You know? There's mental I mean, health care in this state is in a better place than it was a decade ago. <laughs> and, oh. <laughs> yeah. Dan, I feel like everything's coming full circle. Now, we've all talked about this where the state's coming in, they're taking over all these local controls, they're going to put their thumb on it. This is, we want the assets, we want control. And then it's going to come back to, Oh, it's too much. We need boots on the ground. We need those yep. locals to tell us what right. we don't see. And then it's going to flip back the other way and they'll say, here it is. Make the it work. Will fall yeah. off the way. Right. The wheels will it's fall It's cyclical. Off. And then, just we were, like then we're the instead state, of working on something that we're continuously improving, now we just got to go back and fix the mess that they've made. I mean, we're all, we're, 
it don't matter who's sitting down there. This is this has been a concern of all of us. The problem with the wheels falling off the bus when they talk about uh, mental health is they're talking about people. Mm -hmm. They're not talking about numbers. They're talking about real life people that are living it every day. Yeah. And when the doors are shut that you can't get in to get the help that you need because you don't fit that criteria that the state set out, not realizing what our need is here in Crawford they're not County. People. They're just numbers to the state. Well, that's why I wanted to point out that those wheels are people. Right. And, uh, and that's the emphasis I've had since day one, that somebody, some big issue is going to happen. It's going to be a person that didn't get the help they needed. They went to this agency crying for help and, oh, you don't check this blank, you're going to have to go here. And because they have a mental she illness, the that coping line. skills, and, and that's when the wheels fall off the bus. Dan, I like Lucas Binkin at ISAC. His theme for this year's legislation session is, we're going to legislate till it's good and broke. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense. Yeah, it does. You know, I get what some of them are trying to do is trying to get, get the purse strings tightened up and get us... Get, get the budgets down. I, I mean, I understand their objectives, or at least I think I do. Well, how can we get any lower? I mean, to get, to get to get people to come into Iowa, you know, we're, we're not a prime vacation destination, but we're wanting to move industry and people into Iowa. I, I think that's part of their objective, but I don't, I think one of the biggest sells in Iowa is that we're people first in Iowa. Yeah. I mean, we're about, you know, build it and they'll come. We're about those things, about the folks, you know I mean? And and if you if you make it too cold and and clinical, I mean, I don't know that it'll you, you'll lose the effect of beautiful countryside and the people that go with it. You know. Well, we've seen it happen already with the new building we bought up in Sioux City, and they you know see one person there, you know because it, they were either too dangerous or you know too aggressive and uh, shut the door on them, and then they end up in the jail. And, I think the further you get away from where the wheel meets the road, you lose the personal touch. You know? And I think that's, we're still where the wheel meets the road. We're mixed with everybody every day of the week. You know, you go to Des Moines, you're, you're, you're a step away from everybody when you're out making legislation. You know, I'm sure a lot of people show up at their door down there, mind you, but, you know, you go up to Washington, it's even worse, you know, and all you do is have professional lobbyists and the people that come along to just give a good story every now and then, you know, I mean, well, it would be nice to know what the legislature's tenure plan is and have them tell you what it is and then make them stick to it. Because it does seem that every year, oh, this is what we're doing. You know, mm -hmm. we, we didn't tell you that. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, here's what we're doing. We're going to get a picture of all these things. And then a year from now, it'll be some other kinds of things. And like I said a little earlier, we've got to give them something else to work on. So, you know, you know, you know, you know, a 1600 page bill and go and pass it and then you read what was really in it. That's Right. I got a real good idea for it. I think they should take Texas's uh, state house example and every other year they meet. <laughs> Slow down what they can do to us. Yeah. <laughs> Slow down the wheels of progress. <laughs> well, anyway, I don't know. I'm, I don't want to. If we had all the answers. Well, well usually, because yeah, that's yeah. how long we, we took to watch uh, Texas people get to the state house. I was, yeah, that's why citizen input. Well, we appreciate <laughs> uh, We're frustrated too, Dave. Every every year. Year. But it seems like redundancy is something that they're looking at. They're going to condense things. And at what point do we really need 99 county governments? Uh, mm -hmm. You're right. Well, you're right. right. I've already asked that my, question. Yes. Original notes. Kind of funny how right. Are you just wanting to fire us? Like, yeah. Probably going to save us a lot of money there. I mean, they can they can give all funds. Just as easily as you guys can. I would think so. Well, I don't know if it'd be just. Would yeah, things change a little? <laughs> we started looking, start looking for properties where it's nice and warm and sunny. Most of them get ahead of the game. When they, when they just close our courthouse. One of the Harrison County supervisors was talking to some somebody from the legislature, and, and I don't remember the exact story, but they were noting that they had a lot of work to do on their courthouse. And they got a neat courthouse, right? Yeah. So I've been yeah. kind of enjoying going there. And uh, the legislator said, you know, you should just get rid of it because a tin, a tin shed would be a lot easier to maintain. And he right. was not kidding. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, that one's got construction scaffolding on it. The rest more than the rest of it. Yeah, I mean, here it's got something going. Yeah, but wow, it's just, you know, it's interesting. Very. I think we're probably more cost efficient than they are. Can a county succeed from state? <laughs> <laughs>
Good we ain't tried it. Well, Let's do there it. should be a convention of counties, huh? There's a convention of states. Hey, Gal, you guys should probably bring that up tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> I like Can it. we have a convention of counties? Well, do we have one right before we start? All right. All right. So anyway, Dave needs to use the rest. Right, you know, get up. Thank I'm you for your I'm input. Go get Mary working on that piece real quick. Mary Budget session. I guess we aren't adjourning. No, we're not adjourning. We're going to give Dave a chance to go relieve his coffee, Chuck. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Thanks for not doing it. I'm using the same book now. Dan, you're welcome to stay. And if I go back to page one. <laughs> That's what we all started to talk about. Know, the region being the business model and the economy. Going, after lunch, get you started. And now it's kind of switching. Will the regions go away? Uh, of course they will. There was a point in time where they talked about how many regions they had and how many they were going to possibly get down to on page six. On page some of them. Well, and that's how far, that's how long ago they started talking about what we were, you know. Oh, now it's kind of going around. Forward. We're we're we nail it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Who's making you sick? Kyle? So how is time for the happy pills? I already had some. I don't think they'll help. Yeah, oh really? I mean this, the whole. Oh, I, I was talking about my brains if, out. Just in case Chuck is. <laughs> we have some happy gummies down there. Did you, my hand down. did you pass it around? Oh no, I was holding on them because I just thought I'd See I how you are? Some of them. Yeah, cheaper by the dozen. I wasn't trying to go over them all. I just was. Yeah, yeah. yeah wasn't yeah, wasn't right busy on. trying to. I was Good just enough. doing. It. Well, you actually did it. <laughs> I don't believe a word of it. <laughs> I've got a Natalie's little poodle. He is a oh You Don't leave. I, I got some of them damn little slip your feet in slipper clog things. And if you leave them sitting by your chair, uh, there'll be one or two missing. <laughs> He's just he doesn't destroy them, does he? Nope, just steals them and puts them by the door. Um, They're supposed to be by the door, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> Natalie probably trained him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe that's what happened. I wish I'd get him to drag my boots that back to the court. They're probably bigger than he is. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Nate. You got, got your toy back. Yeah. You're set? Set. All right. Set. Chuck. You all right? You want to sit down? Ready, set, Let's go. Join the party. Well, first one, I mean, I have many years I've done this. I don't know how best it is. Yeah. Yeah. If you got questions I ask, are you asking? We do. Uh, you do have questions. Throw a lot of numbers at you. No, not yet. No fall. We're not shy. We'll, we'll throw a lot of numbers at you. <laughs> the, the thing I handed out first here, just start, start, start on that. That's the my department. Yes, sir. My fun. You go across the top, go the front, go down the sides, and that's the department. And a couple of years of history on the right hand side. So if you want to look that over for a minute, or come let let Mr. Give Mr. Dozer a chance. So to Chuck, start. when it, when it's when you have on the top and it's got totals and then budget, it's got 2022 slash 2024. I guess what does that mean? So that should be 23 24. Yeah. Okay. All it's right. the new budget year. That's okay. the, the budget we're working on. Okay. I don't know if it was yeah. two years combined. No, it is not. Combined. That would be very confusing. Okay. <laughs> this is just hot off the press. Hot off the press. <laughs> All right. We do have white out. Yeah. Just the number I looked at. And then the, and then the re-estimate just right means right that now. that's what we're planning on spending up until was it like June, 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 June 30th, 30th yeah. of this year? Yeah. yeah. And it did change a lot from and and the re-estimate numbers come from um what were they before? I mean when was it how often do you do this? Once a year. Once a year. Yeah. Okay. Well, unless they have an amendment. Right. You know, they have we might right. an amendment, but it that would all change. Yeah. And we've had one amendment this year. Yeah. Yes, we did. And are planning the next one. Damn it. I got that. Sorry, two, two columns. 
What? 2022 in the next column, too. But that one should be 22. Yeah, 22, 22 23. Still have really kicked our but this one should be 23, 24. So, so, for instance, like I serve on the Wesco board. So, like, where does we give money to Wesco in this budget? Out of Department 51. General services. Right here. General services. Yes, sir. Yep. A lot of things so are what, in there. Okay. All of all yeah. of our twenty eight years. All said, the twenty eight years. So imagination. Yeah. Yeah. Remember last year that one sheet when we yeah. like pencil board, board, we like yeah. discuss, right? I'm right. right. We're right. going to write the board for the general service. That's the general service. CDC. I got something for CDC. That. Okay. All the, What's that? I got something for that. Okay. I'm just going to share with you guys. Everybody's going to get a hand out. Like this is. Should we give it to them? I don't either. They can look at these small pages because that's the Department 51. Oh, okay. So I have my ruler. Don't dig in the shed. I'll give you some guidance. I know. So there's some. I know. I know y'all. I know y'all. Just like I know y'all. We know y'all. Why don't you grab uh, the ones that are stapled? Texas girl. Yeah, the short papers in the back that are stapled. Start with them. Yes, yeah. out of that paper clip group, I just we just handed out. There's a stapled bunch that are small like this. It's a general services department. Of time. So, Got it. Good lead in, Craig. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Way to get right into the meat and the potatoes. Okay, so we did this uh, sheet uh, form once already. I'm not sure what uh, Terry gave me the updated information. So, and then we we'll plug in the 24. Is this with the new numbers? Yes, so what we decided on 24 is the new stuff, the, the very right column. Yes, ma'am. We, we estimated the 23, and the 24 is proposed. Yep. So, so, like Craig's question, what's going on? With probably in the health and social services. Yep, our central development. And there's uh, sixteen thousand. That's county volunteer EMS. That's a new. Take that out. And we didn't ask. Yeah, money. see, didn't I tell you that yesterday? Yeah, that perhaps. they're. Yeah. So we can take it out. Yeah. Take what out? The unless sixteen thousand. Let's get on the route of. I, yeah, I don't. You got to find out if you can. That's true. I don't know if you can. We're going to leave it in until we know, huh? Well, I can't remember. No, we can no. amend because it, it'll, if you were planning on it coming out of the tower fund, were right. you? Yeah. So I just take that out. Yep. Well, we got to get some lower anyway. So 16 out. Yeah. yeah. Up to you guys. Yeah. That's out. Scratch. Scratch. Why we're, we're scratching? Let me get it to work. Let me get you that last time you did. Are we still? Here we go. You haven't been in here in a while, child. Yeah, the pens are drying. Social service. Yeah. <laughs> White out and the racist. Say that again. Health and social service. Yeah. Those we are get, by request. They are by request. Um. Region 12, the transit bus and stuff, I don't know that we have a choice. Do we, Chuck? Because we entered into an agreement. Because we're in an, yeah. Is that the bus that like runs down to Harlem? Yeah. Like, no. no. No, those Around are. Here, mostly. It's, yeah. It just runs here. Yeah. Over that little shed out by Fairway. All right. Yep. yep. The, the, the one that runs the Ida Grove or no. Harlem, those are we, yeah, we those are job shuttle buses. Yeah, we we facilitate we were the yeah. fiscal agent or originally. And originally now and they've, they, they they've they've grown up and the, flown the coop and they're doing their own thing. Yeah, so we don't we give don't any fund it anymore. We just like do. you know, well, we never funded grow. them. We were just a pass through agent. Right. We were a pass through. Yeah. Is is that do the, the companies taxi mostly taxi? fund it themselves? No, no. 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 that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I hate ship, shipping people out of Denison when we need people yeah. there and then paying yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the that bank over that one. That's a city of Denison. That's not us. Paying taxes here. Picked up here in Walmart and then get home and they don't pick them up at Walmart anymore. They pick them up out at the the last and last little Bob Garst. Right. What if so? Okay. 
back to the budget. These numbers are are requested, yep. so most of them have flexibility as to what you actually approve All to of fund. Yes. All, not just the ones in health. And yes, services. most of them. I would say most of them. Like the CDC do. appropriation, you know, we, they ask for sixty. They ask for more money you know, to fund that position. And I and I still think fifty is plenty, but that's my opinion. Right. So we could debate that now if we wanted to. Right. You all can yeah. can yeah. discuss these numbers and yeah. make adjustments. Yeah. Yes, correct. The daycare center and building maintenance, and we're locked into that with the 2080. Yeah. Sure those can't that. really change because that's right. I those are one of the ones that can't really change, I don't think. Too much history there. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of history there. But that like, council against domestic abuse, that's a request. The um, center against abuse, that's a request. Elderbridge, that's a request. Um, mowing weeds, we actually have someone that goes to the county cemetery, which is South Bavarian, and mows that once a month, um, starting in May. I think it's May through August just ahead of Labor Day, and that's probably the last mowing it gets. So five times. Is there a reason like that we have someone do that and not just have the county employee drive a truck out there with a mower and mow it? We'd have to pay someone anyway. I mean, right. I mean, so secondary roads would, would charge, us. charge us to do it. I right. Do you feel like we get our bank get up like deal this way. Council Against Domestic Abuse and I don't know, Center Against Abuse and Elderbridge. What do you need? I mean, hell, we don't even. Did you break my fence? Elderbridge. Elder I, I thought Elderbridge yeah, was a good one. We do, you know, for that, what the, the, when she has her presentation for Probably what we give. Money was, ahead with what we It just invest, really seems like. like okay. What about the Center Against Abuse and Council oh, Against Domestic Abuse? Can you throw those away behind you? Certainly. Thank you. No problem. We don't, don't have to rest in our love funds in. Am I not listening to you? Contracted. Before? Say it again. <laughs> Center Against Abuse and Council Against Domestic Abuse get funds from us, but then are they contracted through public health to provide those services? I don't know that. I don't, I don't think they're contracted. so. I they're don't, on their own. I think they're separate. I think they are separate. They, are, they, are they kind of redundant or? No. Center no. Against Abuse, we haven't given to in 2021 and 22. Right. But isn't that the. Gal that kind of, I've only I've seen her here the last couple of years, but don't those funds kind of go for someone who finds themselves uh, uh, needing help and they can help them get housing and help them uh, get back on their feet? And I don't believe you know that we have an agency with you know unless you have a diagnosed mental illness, that's where that comes in. This would be somebody who's. If you the know, shit kicked out of them. Yeah, and them. they're they're perfectly fine, but they just have no place to go, and they've got children, and so mm -hmm. for that dollar amount, if we can continue that program so that people don't have to stay in that kind of a situation, that I think the difference is, is that they're not mentally ill and they're not on any programs necessarily. It's a temporary place they find themselves. That's the lady that was beat with one of her of her life. Or a guy. Guys are no, no, this actually yeah. 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 Yes, yes, board. absolutely. But guys are getting sure. beat these days, too, I understand. But in my point, I don't mean that I bring it up because <laughs> I don't want to go staff somebody in Sioux City that we see no advantage of it out of here. If it helps somebody here, we're, right. Great. We do have so the agencies come through. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, that's, I guess when they were here, they did show that. Yeah, oh, the numbers of people that uh, found and need that. Uh, <laughs> so I would hate to, you know, for that to tap that whole way where there's no That's place to stuff. go. And I think the difference between those two things is that it's not a history of mental illness. And they've not been diagnosed. They just find themselves, <laughs> whether it be male, female. Um, uh, so <clears throat> I would add do they to do they do different things? I mean, yes. I mean, do we know? That they, yes. Okay. No, you don't think they're redundant in centers against abuse and council, council against, against domestic, domestic abuse? abuse? Well, that was what I asked. Right. I mean, one asked for fifteen thousand. We gave them ten, and then we put five to the other one, so it totals fifteen. So, is that one place, you know, getting the fifteen? But now they just split it up as to how they ask it to try to make sure that they get it. Or 
That's that's my only question, I guess. And then you can kind of see how maybe you could. We just had this talk about the governor and the legislature. Sometimes you wonder this what they look at going out to the counties. They sure. go, well, look at these yeah. look like they're doing the exact same thing. Why don't we just combine them? Right. You know. I gotta, I gotta think about that for now, Frank. The people that come to order to find that out. And and Dave, you're on the region 12, but I'm assuming that region 12 has different specific programs, which is why we have money right. that goes to them for transportation, why we have money that goes to them for housing. They're right. specific region 12. Yes. If you look at it, like an organization chart, they have region 12, and then they have all these organization units underneath that are trans and housing. Uh, grant so we writing. specifically give yeah. each yeah. one of those. Yeah. 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 So they always have different loan fund. Yeah. piece of paper too. Yeah, we're all involving loan fund. Right. And those matching yeah. funds only go out if there is funds, a program to match to. Isn't that, is that kind of right? right? Yeah. So and we're not spending those Region 12 funds right off the bat. It's, uh -huh. But it gives you the spending authority if they do right. are needed. And then on the on the top, as far as the, the daycare center building maintenance, I think that was the 2080 sign between county, city, and the school. Yep. And then above that, the agency dare, daycare yeah. service, debt service. And I think that debt's paid off. It is. But I think all that money actually goes into building maintenance because yes. they've had a lot of... That's what I thought. The building's been depleting That's lately. That's what I thought. So, yeah. Because we give given 13000 I think that all goes into maintenance now that I went to That's my right. first meeting. Right. And, yeah, that's um, right. and I don't think they do spend that. All. Yeah. As an example, you know, the, the original refrigerator freezer been in there since the beginning. It, right. it shelled out. We had money available to replace it with the oh, oh, right. oh, one. Oh my goodness. Uh, carpet is worn out. Roof, furniture. And Mary, quite contrary, she's been in 5,000 times three entities, 15,000 a year, it hasn't kept up with the maintenance right. needed when you talk about expensive gift <laughs> projects. Or, you know, our, our door locks were getting bad and they're, you know, the yep. mini yes. blinds were looking like kids had been hanging on them. Yep. So like West Central, they've requested that 4,000. Mm -hmm. You can not do the whole four. You can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You yeah. can make I think decisions like, like the West that. Central, though, that, I mean, for bang for buck. Right. We get way more back for our Let's just say, say yeah. with Elder Bridge. Elder Bridge right. is another the same one type of them that is, it's like a no-brainer, dude. Yeah. And Elder Bridge is actually a formula that they use to develop that number and you know yeah so i those two are just you want to put them all together no i don't i don't think they need to be together it's just the, their uh different description if they're not using them for debt i, I think it's just oh, the, the, oh for they, daycare that may be that way yeah we could move it all to the building maintenance line <laughs> And most of them on here, you seem like you do get good bang for your buck on what we're getting back yep. in return. Yep. But probably sooner than later, you're going to have to decide how many of those good deals you can afford. Right. Well, I mean, right. depending on what this legislation does to our future budgets. Mm -hmm. You're right. Is all I'm saying. You're happy with Gary Jones on HIPAA Consultant? Yep. Yeah. So I inquired to um, Hill Aaron Hillegas and Ehlers and Cooney about services from them. And um, after a little bit of time, if we were to put all of our union stuff together with our HR consulting and HIPAA consulting, it would be about 2,500 a month, which is quite a bit more than what we pay currently for so currently HIPAA consulting is a thousand a month mm -hmm. and Gary or um, Jack, Reed. Jack Reed is what it's five I think it's 550 it's going up to 650 July 1 of right. in the well, new budget year. Grand a year so, um, so that's only that's what